Hello everyone and welcome to today's stream. Hopefully everything is working correctly, it seems to be. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, let me tell you a little bit about this piece I'm working on today. Uh, if you tuned in last week, you will recognize this fun uh, kind of pirate style tiefling. Um, last week we did all the line art for her, we got that done. So today what we're going to be working on is we'll be painting in the skin tone and seeing about getting her hair and the cool little hat all done. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to get started. As you can see, I already have a colour palette prepared up here. Um, this character actually has more uh, kind of a regular, um, more kind of humanoid skin tone going on. I know a lot of tieflings I paint have super bright colours, uh, but this tiefling, this tiefling has a slightly more muted palette. Um, yeah, oh hi, thank you so much Orange Juice God for joining us, very kind, and to Justin Tigan as well, thank you. And of course Rebel, thank you so much for the sub, that is very very lovely of you. And thank you to Queerbird as well for the sub. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's being so lovely today, thank you so much, we've only just got started and it's already looking good. Okay, so as you can see I've kind of already started the basic shading uh, for this character, we've got a bit of kind of uh, rosier blush on the cheeks. And uh, I think the next thing we want to do, hold on, I'm just going to take out my uh, my reference on my other screen. Yes, there we go, perfect. Um, so I can double check what I'm doing as I do it. Uh, so I think the next thing I want to take a stab at is adding some highlights to the skin. Obviously right now it's looking extremely orange. So uh, the thing to do when you've kind of got your basic shadows down, make a new layer of the skin. Uh, I'm not actually going to bother naming it because it's going to disappear soon. Make sure it is clipped to the layer below. This will basically stop us painting outside our lines. And then we, actually, is my chair too high up? No, it's fine. Uh, we're just gonna get cracking with these highlights. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try and start gently and then work our way towards the, uh, the brightest colors. All right, so we're gonna grab a big brush because um, it's easier to get a smooth texture when you're using a nice large brush. I'm gonna start by adding this lighter tone to the forehead. The horns aren't actually gonna be fleshy pink, that would be really weird. Uh, I think they are going to end up as kind of, they, they go black. So don't worry about the horns yet, the horns I'm gonna worry about once we've basically done all of the skin texture. And thank you so much Quietly Freya for the sub, that is very, very sweet of you, thank you so very much. Um, okay, I'm just going to blend out the, the paler tint above the nose kind of region uh, and then just make sure I haven't gone over too much below it. Uh, and then we're just going to grab that again and introduce that bright colour elsewhere. Oh my goodness Rebel, thank you so much for the sub gifts. Um, everyone who has just received a sub, you can now access our Discord. Um, it's a chill place to chat about D&D and um, other things, like I do a lot of art share stuff there, I encourage other people um, to uh, kind of show their artwork and we kind of share feedback and it tries to be a nice productive uh, situation. Thank you so much Released Pod for joining the uh, for joining us this afternoon as well, I hope you enjoy the stream. Okay, so now we've got the, the forehead highlighted, uh, the next place to think about are cheekbones. Now these always tend to pick up quite a lot of light. Um, so often I will start kind of at the apex of the cheekbone and gently brush my pen uh, in from there. <laughs> oh, Rebel, that is just so kind of you. Thank you so much. Uh, and then obviously going in, eye dropping between the colours that we've, we've got going now and just blending that there in. Sometimes it pays to uh, stay with a large brush, sometimes it's better to switch to a smaller brush, kind of depends on the situation. Here I am, I've kind of gone with a medium, for now, <laughs> I invariably will change my mind soon. I'm very fickle as a painter. Alright, so that's kind of fairly nicely blended in, it's got a bit over the eye but we're going to add some more eye details later anyway. Uh, so, uh, next thing to do, same thing on the other side. Our light is going to be coming slightly from the left for this piece. Um, so the lights are actually going to be slightly more prevalent on this here side. 
and then as we draw down on the face it's going to blend that in like so phoenix iwaki thank you so much for the sub that's incredibly kind welcome <laughs> Ooh, quite fair, that's super cool. Um, Eldritch invocations are so much fun. There's loads of really cool ways you can flavor them and that's that's very badass. Add a little bit of light on that side of the lip as well. Obviously in this case, the nose shadow is gonna be coming down and slightly to the right. Um, cool, so um, of course, we're also gonna have some highlight on the chin. And I'm just going to draw uh, a bit more light up here, actually. It's a bit it's a bit too much in shadow. Quibo, thank you so much for the bid donation. That's very, very sweet of you. Thank you. Everyone is super generous today. Thank you all so much. Um, just <laughs> a very, very kind and very well placed as I just paid a huge wad of council tax today after um, it had been incorrectly described to me when we moved into a new place, which meant suddenly... Suddenly money, you know how it is. All right, just gonna smooth out some of these areas a little bit more. Uh, going to come in with some more light um, on this lip here. Obviously it's not as bright as the other side, but the light is still fairly, I said it's from the left, but it's also fairly head on as things go. Um, I'm gonna bring back a little bit of this rosiness onto this side, I think. Because we wanna keep the two sides balanced. Yeah, it's coming along all right. Yeah, I really like the, uh, Tasha's is just such a fun, a fun book. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I'm super excited for the newly announced uh, books. I've been waiting for a Feywild-based adventure for ages. Uh, it's one of my favorite kind of setting types and uh yeah it just sounds super exciting and cool uh oh i'm afraid you'd call me kramer the uh <laughs> my my mod this is the one day that unfortunately they are having their covid vaccine so they cannot join us in chat today um discord has been super flaky lately for quite a lot of folks i'm not i'm not exactly sure why uh in the past um, it's kind of been a, a weird, a weird thing that it's just kind of had to wait for it to sort itself out. Um, but we might be needing to try like reconnecting things up to make sure it works. Okay. And oh my goodness. Thank you so much to Aiden Olia for the sub gifts. We're really on fire today, everyone. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, that is just incredibly kind. Yeah. Also gonna just, oops, that color didn't drop very well. Uh, blending inside the mouth. Hell yeah, we got that hype train. Amazing. And a bit more blending because uh, my painting is 90% blending. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to take this slightly lighter color around and just lighten up the jaw. A little bit. And then, of course, blend it back in. Okay, but it is looking nice and soft and that's coming along. Uh, cool, so I think it's time we jumped up to the next level of, of light. So I'm going to grab uh, this, this light kind of pinky color. You tend to get more kind of pinky notes in on the cheeks uh, and around the lips you tend to get a bit as well, so I'm just going to add a little bit of pink to these corners. And on the, on the forehead, rather than pink, we're going to lean into the slightly more golden tones. Uh, you do tend to get slightly more golden light reflected on the forehead. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's very, very kind. I'm doing well. Yeah, it's been um, a slightly, slightly different week uh, for me, 
had a few early early rises. Usually I, I'm the kind of person who works super late uh, and sleeps fairly late. Um, so today's been a little bit different. Uh, and as of the last few days, because my sleep schedule's been all topsy-turvy. <laughs> Not in a bad way, I've been getting up a lot earlier, which is, feels great for productivity. But, um, takes a bit of getting used to. Tiny bit more light on that there chin. And finally get his really bright colour. And... Kind of concentrate that in the centre of the forehead. And then of course, bring it slightly down the bridge of the nose and making sure it's fairly well blended into the surrounding colours. I'm kind of like, often I'll like squint at something, kind of see how it's coming along. I kind of want to add a bit more light coming down this eye here. It's more of the pinky light variety. As you can see, I'm using an absolutely massive brush for a lot of this. Um, thank you so much to Sargam Sargamic for the follow. I hope you enjoy the stream. Okay, so you can kind of see uh, that's everything we've kind of done there in that layer. It's looking quite nice. Um, I still need to add a bit of light across the rest of the face in a few places. Obviously, there's the chin. Um, we've got quite a dark, it's still quite dark under here. So I'm just going to go ahead and lighten up a tiny bit. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Aiden Olia. I hope it does help. Um, if there's anything specific you want to ask questions about, always you're always welcome to do so. I try to uh, answer questions where I can. So, and that goes for everyone. If you have a question about the process or what I'm doing, please do feel free to drop it in chat, and I will uh, do my best to answer it. Um, although sometimes I don't always see every <laughs> every message, depending on how in the zone I am. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do now? I make a new layer. And this is uh, what some people might know as the overlines layer. Um, and I create this layer basically to tone down the line art a bit. Um, and, uh, ooh, level three hype training mode. Let's share that, shall we? Lovely. <laughs> um, and this is a layer that I use to basically kind of tone down um, uh, the line art that I have. Because having very dark line art on top of your paintwork can sometimes kind of detract from how nice and smooth it all is. You know, you want to show off that you've done all this nice blending, and if it just kind of ends with this big uh, dark cloudy line, then it kind of loses um, some of its softness. Which is why I now paint over a lot of my line art once I've kind of got the areas where I want them. See, that's already kind of softened the jawline a little bit there. Um, cool, so the next thing I'm going to do is I think we need to give her a proper nose. Uh, so I'm going to merge down this highlights layer and make a new one. Uh, I'm not going to name it because once again it's going to end up merged down so it doesn't need its own name. Um, and I'm going to eye drop from one of these pinkier areas, one of these slightly darker, um, more saturated tones. And the reason for doing this is um, often around the nose and the internal areas of the eyes um, you can get a lot more blood vessels near the surface um, and that's why these tend to appear more kind of pink. Uh, call me Crayer, the overlying layer, is it my topmost layer? Uh, it is usually second from the top. The one layer I tend to have above the overlines layer is um, what is often referred to as the shiny layer. Um, which is if I've got little glints of light um, shining right on the top, usually for kind of, um, ugh, I hate that people don't like this word, but usually if there is a moist texture that has light glinting off of it, uh, that will be done in the shinies layer, which goes on top of the overlines layer, uh, which you will probably see later in the stream. 
Okay, I'm just now blending this tone for the nose in the rest of the skin tone. And there we go, that's nice and smoothly blended in. Uh, good afternoon, Morville. Welcome. Lovely to have you here as always. Uh, so with that basic layer in, like so, I'm actually going to keep it dark. I like a nice bit of contrast for this character. Um, see, I like the word moist. It's really satisfying to say. It has a good mouth feel. <laughs> I'm just making it worse. Um, so I find it kind of sad that other people kind of have rejected this word. Um, all right, we're going to grab a dark color now. I'm going to go for this slightly purpley shade color. Uh, by the way, thank you so much to Clearly Legit, uh, Ophelias, and, well, Clearly Legit and Ophelias. Oh, no, it's not L. Ophias for the follows. I hope I said those right. <laughs> yeah, the water genasi layer. That is absolutely correct, uh, pixel linguistic, 100%. All right, next, as you can see, I'm basically just adding basic shadow to the lower plane of the nose. Uh, and then I'm gonna blend that in. Like so, ooh, itchy eyes, ooh. And uh, with that, we can then bring across this slight shading layer, go for a bigger brush. Uh, we can then bring it across and kind of get some shadow to show that area of the nose uh, where the nostril kind of comes around and digs into the skin a little bit. Just very softly so we don't want to overdo it. And then it's a little bit of shadow on the side to dictate the same sort of thing going on. Oh yeah, it is totally allergy season. I've been doing a lot of garden work recently. Usually I, I don't tend to get a lot of um, like grass or, or plant related allergies, but um, it's it's a weird one. It's very hard to predict. <laughs> Uh, and yes, uh, Stonebreaker, um, you should have access to the Discord. Sometimes it takes a little while. I think I'm gonna re try and like redo the connection between the Discord and Twitch because it's been being a bit wobbly lately. Uh, I'll be talking to my mod about that. But hopefully, if it isn't working for you, uh, it'll it'll be fixed soon. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing here is I call this the Diamond of Power because. It's a quick way uh, to give some depth to noses. Most people, I mean, I have more of a triangle, but most people will have a little plane on the top of the nose uh, that's heavily kind of highlighted. Um, again, it's a different shape for most people, but I, if you're trying to simplify things down to understand them, I like to commonly do a, a diamond. Um, now I'm just basically doing the top plane of the nose coming down along there and then lightening up uh, side the diamond that's got more light coming onto it, you know? And then what I'm also gonna do, I'm just gonna very gently lighten up that whole left-hand side because that is where our light is coming from. A bit of blending there just to give us some shape. And then I will blend in this kind of light stripe. <laughs> It's true. I think it's because I've been in the garden so much recently. Weirdly, it's not the uh, it's not the like pollen stuff tends to get to me and annoy me when I'm gardening. It's just heat. I do really badly in in heat. I burn super easily, as you can kind of I don't know if you can actually see, but I have <laughs> considerable sunburn on my forearms from spending literally no time at all outside yesterday. Um, I really should put sunscreen on. Uh, I'm a doofus. Make sure you wear sunscreen. I did, just didn't expect to burn so quickly, I've got to be honest. Right, now I'm just going to slightly um, blend the bottom of that light. Um, I'm going to put a little on this side, see how it looks. Mm, I need that to be a bit more subtle, I think. There we go. And then, of course, blend in the bottom of that. Because obviously, again, our light is more focused on the left-hand side. <laughs> Happy time zone to you too, in those wanderings. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, we've got like, it's funny actually, I should really get an aloe. It's one of the few houseplants I don't have right now, uh, which is bananas really. I should have one, I don't know why I don't. Uh, and I need to get a big floppy hat, that's an absolute must. Um, I do not know why I don't already have one, it's an oversight on my part. If not just for the Lady Dimitrescu vibes. 
Um, it's very important. Alright, get that slightly brighter. And blend it. And then what I'm going to do, very much like before, I'm going to jump up to that overlines layer. I'm going to grab a slightly darker colour, but that is nonetheless brighter than the line art colour. And I'm just going to go ahead and just draw over the line art. Kind of see that that really softens out that line, makes it look nicer. Oh no, a perfect stripe! I did that once. Uh, I went to Annecy, which is an animation uh, film festival in uh, in France, um, a few years ago, and I thought I had applied sunscreen properly. Turned out I hadn't, and I ended up with the most outrageous-looking handprint shape burned into my skin. Um, well, I should say the opposite. It was like all the area around the handprint was burned into my skin. And the worst part is it was like on my thigh because obviously it was so hot. You just wanted to wear like shorts all day. Uh, so that was embarrassing. And I, I was a, a, a doofus in that particular situation. That was 100% my fault. <laughs> right, I'm just going to add a bit more detail under the nose itself, including... Um, obviously the dark of the nostrils which are gonna be like so there you go, you can kind of see how that nose has come together now which is nice um, what do I want to do next? I think we want to do the lips uh, next but first thing to do is save because we do not want to lose our work we really really don't <laughs> so let's go ahead and save and I'm just going to double check, I know this character is wearing some degree of makeup, uh, but I want to check there's no specific... Okay, there's no specific lip colour, but I think they're going to be slightly darker than a normal kind of skin tone. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and grab this dark, slightly pinkier, kind of rougier tone. Let's grab a darker version of that right now and stick that in. Yeah, sunblock does expire, so make sure you buy like a new bottle. That's what I need to do. Alright, so staying... Oh, I shouldn't really be doing that on this layer, but I've already started, so let's just go with it. Um, going to just trace the outline of the lip and draw straight into there with our darker colour. Ah, oh, also I'm so excited, I have D&D tonight. Woo, d, &D. Enjoying our, our Odyssey continues. <laughs> huh. Pixel Linguistic, that's such a cool piece of trivia. I have learned something about giraffes today. Yeah, the campaign's going very well. Obviously, we're only like one and a half sessions in. We had like a mini, uh, a mini session last week to introduce a new character who couldn't join us for session one. And it was adorable and wholesome, and everyone is an, is very silly, and I'm absolutely sure they're going to get horrifically treated in the <laughs> trials to come. I've heard the Odyssey of the Dragon Lords gets pretty intense, and I love it. I love the angst. I'm ready for it. All right, now I'm just going to uh, shade the lips. You know, and this involves kind of getting incrementally darker colours. Uh, specifically, the corners of the lips tend to attract a lot of shadows that you want to kind of look at. Oh no. Oh no, androgynous, that's terrifying. Best of luck in your uh, big battle against uh, the big bag. Big bad, I can speak properly. Okay, that's a bit of detail on that top lip. Now I'm gonna afford some attention to the bottom lip. Uh, I'm basically just using the base color of the top lip to start with, uh, shading the bottom. And I'll probably cut back into it as we go on, but this is like our starting point. And then of course blending in these newly introduced kind of shaded areas. And we can 
Okay, let's zoom out, see how it's coming along. <laughs> oh, sounds like everyone's having some really cool games. I'm super jazzed for you all. I'm just going to soften the edges of the lip now. Like so, I'm going to grab that darker colour with a smaller brush, just bring a bit of shadow back to the lower edge. But there's the basic kind of shape of our lips. <laughs> That's uh, a classic way. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous because I haven't I haven't played a full spellcaster for a little while. Uh, having said that, I'm playing a moon druid, so I don't think that really counts as a full spellcaster per se. Uh, but nonetheless, you don't start with many spell slots as a druid, I've noticed. But it's fine. All I need to do is make sure I can land fairy fire, uh, then turn into a big old direwolf and start uh, start wrecking the joint. You know. <laughs> all right there is the basic shape and color for our lips i'm just going to go ahead and just shore up some of the uh, shading there and then i'm going to jump up to the overlines there to soften the line art which right now is far too heavy as you can see she's also got a elaborate piercing uh, underneath the lip which we'll need to give some attention to in a bit Yeah, it's a lot softer. Almost tempted really just to cut into this bit, calm it down. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add a hint of darker shadow underneath. And then we can start giving the top lips some attention. Okay, top lip time. Uh, usually what I do is I will grab whatever colour the nearest, kind of the near adjacent parts of the lip are, and use that to paint over the line art for the lips. And this kind of includes the little smile lines of the edges. And then once that's done, I can kind of even them out a little bit. Often um, the lips like shape will be slightly off kilter like it is here. So I'm just going to make sure the little Cupid's bow actually ends in the middle. And then what we can do is we can bring in some of this bright little light. Just run that along the top a little bit and finally it's time to introduce the shinies layer and what we're going to do is take a uh, kind of brighter pinkier hue and uh, add some shine to these here lips and then i'm just going to go ahead and blend this in a bit That's basically what it is. Uh, and while I'm here, I'm just gonna drop down onto the basic, actually, I'm gonna drop down to the basic nose layer and just add a little bit of shadow underneath from both the kind of bit above the Cupid's bow and the little shadow cast by the nose ring there. Okay, 
Uh, lovely. So I think it's time we merge that down. Uh, we've got all the skin barring what's on the overlines on one layer now. And here's me thinking it needs a bit of tone variation. We've got a lot of very orangey kind of tones coming in here and I kind of want to mess with that a bit. So I'm going to just play around with the color balance setting a little bit. Uh, for example, I can push pinks a little stronger, just straight up push reds a bit stronger, tone down the yellows. There's lots of really fun things you can do with um, color adjustment. I'm almost like kind of dabbling with a little bit of blue. Yeah, kind of gives me the balance I wanted. That'll do, yeah. Um, lovely, and then we kind of want to make sure we do the same thing with overlines because obviously it needs to match. Whoops, that's the wrong thing. I want to go into color balance. Uh, so for example, I turned up the pink and I turned up the blue. And then again. Uh, okay, so the next thing to do with the face is the eyes. Uh, and very good point, uh, Rebel. Thank you so much for reminding me. We should definitely save. Um, so let's have a look at the eyes. So going back to the base skin layer. Uh, I'm going to use some of the dark ready colours that we've already got in a few other places. Thank you so much to T-Rexton for the follow, by the way. And we're just going to bring... Actually, I might just tune it towards purple a tiny bit. Um, we're just going to bring some of that into the corners of the eyes to start us off. So here, coming down from the far corner and here. This character is wearing a uh, kind of smoky eyeshadow, so that's kind of why we've got this uh, slightly dark smoky palette going on. It's a bit of fun. Uh, I'm just going to blend all this in. And then we will take that colour to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now if anything on the other side it'll be a bit heavier because um, uh, we do have the shadow of the brow coming down. I don't want it to be too extreme, so. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, that's very, very kind of you to say, call me Kramer, uh, but I I don't really have any formal training in, in colour theory. It's basically just stuff, stuff I've kind of picked up along the way, um, and um, stuff like... Stuff like knowing where obviously things get more saturated and desaturated kind of comes from studying, well not even studying, but just once you've painted a ton of faces uh, from photographic reference and you kind of pick up a bit of scientific knowledge of where the blood is close to the surface. For example, you get a lot of blood around the mouth and the lips and the interior bits of the nose. And it's kind of like a sort of common sense that, okay, if um, there's kind of blood near that surface, it's going to have a more saturated kind of red tint to it. Um, so a, a bit of kind of anatomical knowledge definitely doesn't hurt, um, I would say. It kind of all, all feeds into each other. Uh, but yeah, I never really got taught uh, colour theory properly. Again, it's I didn't even really have any books on it because that kind of thing, I gotta admit, bored me out of, to tears. Uh, I really struggle at learning from books. Um, so I would say it's, it's kind of something that you just sort of, the more you do, you the more you kind of pick up and think, oh yeah, these colours totally do work. And a lot of the time, the colours I pick, uh, they aren't just from my own head. A lot of the time, the colours I choose would be directly referenced from photographs. I would literally have taken the eyedropper tool and like just grabbed colors from photos because that's a great way to ensure that your kind of colors are true to nice kind of photocopies compositions. Uh, we are in overlines, aren't we? Why can't I paint over? Okay, I can. It's just YouTube. YouTube. Photoshop being silly. <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab paint over this little bit here. I think too. To lighten that up and then tidy up underneath there. Do a wee bit of blending that into the surrounding kind of pinks. And then finally, I'm going to grab that really bright highlight colour again. And just poke a little bit into the corners. Often you get a little bright little bit of light coming around the inner corner of the eye. And this can really help them stand out on the face. 
so you can kind of see. Um, but yeah, uh, okay, so with that done, we've kind of got the details of the eyes looking quite nice. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more highlight, kind of to show the sparkliness of the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna grab a size four brush for this. Um, just here, right concentrated in the middle of the eyelid. Same on this side. And that kind of, again, it makes the, the eye kind of makeup look cool and glossy. Um, so that is that. Let me just double check the eyes. Ooh, I like this. Kind of ambery red eyes with a cat-like pupil. This will be fun. Hey, thank you so much, 12 side guy. That's very, very kind. Thank you so much. Um, cool. So when it comes to painting eyes, I do make a new layer for this. So I'm going to call it eyes. It's above the skin layer. And I'm going to start out with a very dark... Uh, a dark red, I'm gonna let it be a bit more saturated. So it's like a very dark burgundy. Uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and fill the entire internal area of the eyeball. Like so. <laughs> you do have the bit leader badge, that's for sure. Okay, so it looks a bit creepy right now, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure this is alpha locked. Then we're slowly gonna make our way up the color spectrum, grabbing lighter tones as we basically bring the light to these eyes. So I'll use a fairly big brush for this, not quite that big, about 100. Um, and then with incredibly light touch, um, bringing in this lighter kind of purpley color. And then we'll get a bit lighter. So we'll move up into orange. And do the same thing. I'm gonna make, the, again, the brush gets a tiny bit smaller each time. And then once again, time. Hi Eloran, welcome. Um, you can see how that's coming along. Uh, for the final time we're gonna dive in with this lighter tone adding kind of now these are starting to look like proper white. That got a bit bright there. And again, I'm barely touching the tablet for this, keeping it very light indeed. And once that's done, we can start thinking about the iris. I'm just gonna pop in a tiny bit of shadow coming down there. Thank you so much to GBS1 Leonardo for the follow. Uh, cool, so again, we would pop a little bit more of that shadow coming in there. Uh, but yeah, we are basically now ready for the um, kind of irises. Again, amber to red. So for amber to red, we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with red. So I'm going to go with a very deep, dark maroon to start us off. Uh, this character Eleran is a uh, a winged tiefling. Just filling in the area of those um, irises there. I think this one needs to come out a bit more. Like so. And once that's done uh, and we're locked in, uh, what I usually do is I jump straight up to overlines. And I will grab an almost black, so very, very dark. And uh, as a slight segue, usually I will use this time just to darken the lashes and kind of add a bit of an eyeliner effect just so they stand out quite nicely against the face like so uh, I also since I'm here just add a bit of light to the little inner eye fleshy bits and I'll grab that real dark color again I'm just gonna add a vague gradient
And then I'm gonna give that a uh, little blend. And finally, switching down to a nice small, uh, small brush, we need to add the pupils. Yeah, so winged uh, tieflings were also known as feral tieflings. Um, I'm not sure if they're in any of the official books. There we go, we've got some nice cat-like eyes going on, and then from the top, I'm just gonna make sure they blend nicely into the top of the eye. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so anything to do is to add this ambery um, look to them. So we're going to start by working again, working our way up the spectrum a little bit. We're going to grab a nice, uh, rich kind of rust colour, and that's going to be our first bit of uh, bringing lightness. And we're going to go for a nice fiery look for these eyes. Hey, Cyber Spectre, welcome! Okay, so, um, now to go up another stage. So, moving up again towards that amber, we're gonna grab another orangey colour. gently marking that in like so um and then finally we want to get uh some little streaks of kind of ambery gold so we're going to grab that color whoops we're not going to zoom in that far i'm going to grab a size four i'm actually thinking screw it um let's go up a bit more yellowy because i have an idea of how i want to do this oh itchy nose itchy nose i'm so sorry So I'm just basically outlining the bottom of the pupil and doing a few little lines radiating outwards. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new layer above the um, above overlines but not above shinies. And we are going to hit, uh, we're going to make a little gentle glow layer. I might not keep this, I just kind of want to see what it looks like. This is great for getting a really bright fire. And I'm only putting it over the bottom part of the eye so they really glow. And there you are. Um, cool. So now I'm going to jump up to the shinies layer, uh, grab an almost white, and zoom in a little bit, and just add a little spot of bright light. But it just kind of brings those eyes together and makes them really kind of gleam. Uh, oh, it was probably the eyes of the chair. It could have been our garden gate. My partner's probably just got home, uh, which are both quite squeaky. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, with the eyes done, the next thing to do is get those brows in and then we've got quite a bit of jewellery that we'll also want to get looking nice. Uh, so let's do eyebrows first, I'm just going to double check her hair. Yeah, now this tiefling has fiery red hair which is going to be delightful to render. Um, so for that I usually start with a dark red, uh, and in fact I actually go into the realm of pink for starting for fiery red hair. Um, and I'm just gonna roughly paint that in on the skin there. And thank you so much Cyber Spectre for resubbing, that is wonderfully kind. We've done so wonderfully today on subs and it really means the world to me everyone, so thank you so very much. I don't know if you can hear a dog barking, we have quite a lot of barky puppers around here. Okay, we don't need to be super careful about these being perfect, but once they're in, we can go ahead and grab a slightly dark colour just to add some shading to them. And then once that's done, grab a lighter colour to add some light to them. 
And this I'm going to do on the overlines layer. And there we go, there we have some eyebrows. They're nice and kind of rich. Um, so next thing I want to do is do the jewelry that's kind of directly on her skin. Then we will finish rendering out the skin uh, around like the neck and the hands, and then we can do her hair. Okay, so um, we are going to start the jewelry. Uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do, let me just merge the eye layer down, make a new layer called, some called jewels for now. Um, and let me just double check. Okay, they they wear mostly kind of gold jewelry as like expected, um, which is great because gold is more fun to render than silver. And I'm going to say thank you very 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 much. <laughs> um, neighborhood doggos do have a lot to say. <laughs> they are quite noisy, but you know I understand that. Sometimes you just got to get something off your chest. Also, the, all the neighborhood doggos are super competitive with each other, and they will literally bark like mad every time they are. Uh, um, they smell or see or hear each other, so. Uh, cool. So, let's just put in the base colours for these pieces of jewellery. I might put some other colours, like, for example, like, ruby red, um, for, for, like, the jewel aspects of the bits that are non-metallic. We've got some eyebrow piercings up here. Why am I on a four? That's way too small. Nine is a bit big, but it'll do. All right, uh, I will probably leave the um, horns um, jewelry for now. That I will do once the horn like, horns are done. Okay, so with the bases in, it's time to render. And I'm gonna go straight up to overlines because this is how I do when it comes to um, metallics. And immediately I'm gonna go up and grab a nice rich orangey uh, tone. And then often when you're shading metallics, you want to paint kind of in a line following the shape. So which is why there are these long circular lines kind of following the shape of the metal. Uh, I'm actually gonna drop down to a four, except it wants to put me a three and I don't like three. Um, I'm gonna leave these two studs, actually I'm just gonna leave the middle stud, which I'm gonna render out like in a ruby color, like a ruby gem. And then do the little labrette piercing. Oh, Rebel, thank you so much for joining me. It was lovely to have you here. And hope you have a fabulous evening. And then finally, let's do these top ones. <laughs> you take care as well. Oh, it reminds me, I finally was able to book my, uh, my to get my first COVID vaccine today. Um, I don't actually get the vaccine until 21st of the month, but I'm looking forward to just getting it done, you know? Okay, uh, now I'm gonna go up, grab a, slightly working our way towards the more golden and ambery colors. As we go. Oh, sounds like my neighbors have their hot tub on, I'm so jealous. All right, and then we'll just add some of that gold down here. Hey, fanboy of Bolas. We are doing tieflings today, indeed. Uh, this particular character is a feral tiefling, so the winged variant, as you can see. And uh, I'm currently just popping in the badass uh, piercings that they've got going. Here's a nice light shade. Got that the pup the dogs outside really are super loud today, aren't they? Oh, of course, I'll drop the Discord link in. Oops. Uh, there it is. Hopefully that works for you. <laughs> All right, let's bring this up here. Let's 
been a, quite exciting actually. Myself and my partner have been talking more seriously about getting a dog um, next year or end of this year. And I want a doggo so bad. Let's add a bit of this bright there. And then finally, we're gonna end with a super bright light, kind of spot of light. Uh, let's make it a bit lighter than that. Uh, yeah, this character is a, uh, a commission uh, for one of my Patreon subscribers. Um, and yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, we have our own garden now, so I, I you know, we can get a dog. Like, I wouldn't want to have one in the little tiny flat that we had before. It wouldn't have been fair um, on them. But now, we can get a little puppo. Again, not till we finish sorting the garden out. Uh, right now, our garden is very much still in process. Hey, thank you so much to uh, BunnyMochi93 for the follow. I hope you enjoy the stream. All right, there are our piercings. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drop down to the skin layer just for a moment because some of them need a wee bit more um, kind of shadow uh, to integrate them into the piece. And usually, if you've got, if you're wearing gold um, or whoops, aspects of gold, um, often the shadows themselves will be quite golden or at least quite saturated. as they kind of reflect, reflect the bright golden light against your skin. Which is why like when you hold like a buttercup under your chin, um, you get like a, a yellow reflected light there because buttercups are very shiny flowers. I don't know if anyone else used to do that as a child, I did. <laughs> All right, let's put in the little jewel tones that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so the middle earring is going to be a little ruby, which is why I've left it. Uh, so we're just going to put in these nice bright ruby tones. And then finally, once again, that very bright, almost white. <laughs> Yay, I'm not the only one. Okay, um, so I think now is a good time to finish um, rendering the ear, get that looking nice. So we're going to start with one of the darkest tones and just use that for the inner ear. And then just start working through the rest of our kind of shading spectrum. I definitely want to bring some of the pink in so we don't get lost in the more purpley tones. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure um, we actually have, so on our right hand side there is a Spaniel and a Shih Tzu. Um, I, there must be a Terrier somewhere else. But yeah, when we eventually look at getting a pup, we are hoping to get a Swedish Valhund, which are... If you're not familiar with them, imagine um, like a husky, but with the proportions of a corgi, uh, and fewer of the, the health problems than a corgi has. They're very, very cute and very uh, good temperament and intelligent pups. Okay, I'm going to jump up to the overlines just for a sec to add a bit of light. And then grab a real nice dark bit for that. And then I'm gonna zoom in for this bit. Um, we've got like the little little twist that comes around here. Nicely to blend that in. Right, and then we're gonna save again. <laughs> if we if we get a dog, you absolutely bet I will definitely share dog pics with everyone. Alright, wonderful. So with the hero done, the next thing to do is we'll walk down and do the chest and the hands. Hey, Lethereal, thank you so much. That's amazingly kind. Thank you so much for the sub. 
Uh, subs seriously make such a big difference and they're very, very much appreciated. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by kind of defining where her collarbone is. It's probably about here. So that's going to come around there. And let's just blend that in. And this bit tends to be a bit experimental uh, when it comes to painting collars. Collars are weird. I'm gonna cut back some of the shading up there. Then again, I did say the shadows were mostly gonna be coming from this direction, so maybe it's here I need to cut back some of the shading. <gasps> Happy Pride Month, Ethereal, indeed. I hope you have a wonderful month. Um, and yeah, to all my, all my lovely queer friends and people in chat, uh, stay safe and have a good one, you know? Lots of blending now. <laughs> Oh, collarbones are a nightmare. You kind of just got to make it up and wing it and be like, yeah, this looks real enough. I would believe this is a collarbone. It's something I always end up returning to at the end of a picture as well. Like, ugh, it doesn't look right. I got to redo it right at the end when everything else is done. Thank you so much to Critical Zone for the follow. I hope you enjoy uh, the stream. And yeah, that is true, Pixel Logic. He does mention the clavicle a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's a cool word. Like, I can see why you, once you know it, you're like, oh, I'm going to show off that I know this cool word. Clavicle, clavicle, clavicle. All right, let's just uh, add a little shade here. Just softening everything a little bit. And then uh, I'm actually gonna bring some light in. And of course it will be blended. There'll be a bit of light coming up from here. Of course, it will have some shade on it because the red hair is gonna come down. I like it when you I like noticing people have like specific speech patterns which are very really unique to them it's just like a cute thing I know I have probably have a ton and you're not really aware of them yourself but other people are all right I'm gonna work on some more on that later but I'm gonna leave it for now because I'm kind of bored of looking at it um but what I am gonna do is we're gonna give the hands some tension I'm gonna start off by just blanketly shading them a bit darker and then grabbing one of our shadow tones gonna gently add a bit more of that there too um and bringing that all the way down and shading my hands And then again, remembering the direction the light is coming from is very important. Um, uh, and again, a lot 
colour blending because that's 90% of what I do. Uh, and then let's go ahead, take that shadow colour around to the other hand and do the same sort of treatment. It's very much kind of iterating between tones to get a smooth kind of finish going. <laughs> Pixel Linguistic, thank you so much for joining today. I hope you have a wonderful uh, afternoon. All right, now let's get a bit darker. nice thing about big heavy pirate sleeves is they cast one shadows. Now that we've got some shadows in, we can bring in the light. So grabbing a fairly light color and a large brush. Large brush is pretty important. Um, we can bring the light back. And then of course, blending it in so we've got a nice smooth finish. And do the same on the other side. Of course, this hand is slightly more in shadow, so the light will be restricted to the thumb and forefinger. And then another stage lighter. And this color will be basically restricted for the brightest parts and kind of knuckles. Just going to bring that tone around to the other hand, similar to before. <laughs> Orange Juice God, thank you so much for joining. I will uh, hopefully have the VOD up fairly soon. I'm kind of catching up with VODs at the moment. Uh, I've uploaded two today, I've just got to publish them, get them out. Um, catching up on, on kind of past ones that should have been out by now. Okay, wonderful. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do a little bit of um, overlines, recoloring here. I'm going to grab this dark brown, oops, doop, 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 all the way back over here, and then just smooth out some of the places where the line art's a little bit too strong. Because I did kind of go a bit overboard with the line art on this hand. Well, both hands really. It just helps kind of soften the, the end result a bit more. Again, that's a style choice. You don't necessarily have to do anything like this. I just like doing it. And then very finally, I think we'll give her some fingernails. She's gonna have some nice dark red fingernails because I just like the idea of that. <laughs> There's one hand and the other. And fingernails, I 
tend to like doing these on the overlines there. I don't know, I just feel they look a bit better that way. And then with that done, we're gonna grab a slightly darker version of that color, add a little bit of shadow to these nails. And do the same on the other side. And then the opposite, we're gonna add a bit of light. <laughs> Yeah, dance photography is fantastic reference for a whole bunch of things. Uh, hands definitely included. Alright, so let's do a save now because we don't want to lose what we've got. And we can actually get rid of the palette layer, that's no longer needed. Uh, and something I want to do, I want to fiddle around with the basic tones of colour a bit. I feel like there's still quite a lot to be done um, in terms of getting the skin colour looking nice. Which translates as, I'm not happy with it yet. So what I'm going to do is, um, I am going to start with the basic skin layer. And we're going to go back, we're going to start with hue and saturation. Sometimes it's an issue of saturation. Um, gosh, I almost like desaturating it a bit. It's a little bit more, you know, tieflingy, a little bit more infernal. Um, we can also wiggle this slider either way. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to overlines. And I'm going to do the same thing to make sure it matches up. And it's being pushed slightly towards the pinker colors. I'm going to zoom in, see if that's working for me. Yeah, I'm liking that, and that works. Um, cool, so with that, we I think it's time to give the horn some attention. Um, so, I'm just gonna double check our horns. Yeah, horns are black. So, uh, what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna make a layer above the skin, we're gonna create a clipping mask, and we're gonna set it to multiply. Um, we're gonna grab a more purpley shade of pink. And what we're gonna do is we're just straight up. We're gonna paint in the darkness of these horns. And this will allow us to kind of get them balanced on the face. They come quite far down and across, so we need to make sure that's echoed on both sides. And sometimes this will involve a little tweaking of line art. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to do that right now because um, I kind of want the hair to be coming over slightly more. Uh, and uh, there that is. So what we're going to do next, we're going to fiddle with this colour. Because we, I'm almost thinking I want them to be a bit less browny. I kind of want them to be proper dark. Don't want them to be blue though. Blue would be wrong. Um, but with that said, I'm going to merge it down. New layer. And then we're just going to start up rendering these horns. Uh, and one of my favourite horn styles, I really like um, doing the horns kind of a little bit ridged. So I'm going to start off with that approach. And to do this, usually I will start with a big brush, having grabbed a slightly darker colour than the surrounding tones. And very gently, I just start doing little lines, starting from the middle. And then often the brush will get a bit smaller as I work. Whoops! Photoshop does like to drop a big spot sometimes. Um, but yeah, working my way towards the outside. Oh, Cyberspector, thank you so much! Uh, this character has been a lot of fun. Obviously, where you have horns kind of curling over, um, the lines will kind of bunch up. 
that's kind of like our basic shape. And then we do the same on the other side. And then what I'm gonna do to just show that this side is slightly more in shadow, I'm just gonna really gently just paint over this whole side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> Photoshop does do that. All right, let's grab that uh, color again. Exactly the same on this side, matching what those grooves are. Although the problem is we've done it, so we've got slightly more on this side, so. Let's just jiggle that a bit. Then we do, we're naturally going to get a little bit of shadow and light around the edges here. And some of that bright light. And a bit of blending, because blending is king. <laughs> Thank you so much to One Floor, Mathascono, and Have Faith for the follows. Hope you enjoy the stream. Okay, so the next thing to do is to start really rendering these forms. So uh, I'm gonna jump up the overlines and, oh, Ellery. Yeah, I had a look at it yesterday, actually. Um, it looks really cute. It's like, I don't know if it's the kind of thing that I will play, but I like that they're trying something different. And save. Yes, this is very true. Thank you very much. <laughs> Always remember to save. All right, so the important thing here is this middle kind of line going down uh, is going to be brighter. Make the brush a bit smaller. Why is this? Okay, it's just taking a bit longer. That's all. And then bringing in the dark bits a bit more. Rendering horns is always like quite experimental as well. A lot of this stuff's very experimental. What am I saying? Basically, I never have a solid plan. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a slightly lighter color when Photoshop wants me to. darker tone when Photoshop decides to work for me and just add shadows in those places where it's gonna get very dark I 
Of course, we haven't even talked about the shadows that the hat's going to bring into play, but we're going to worry about those later. Okay, Photoshop didn't like that. Let's just move it along a bit. Okay, now let's bring these colors onto the other side. Slight big brush for this. As before, um, we're just going to expand the edges of the horn slightly, giving it that more kind of bumpy appearance. I don't, didn't want to brush that big. Twenty nine will do just fine. Uh, and then we'll get a little bit of side light coming up here. And then finally, we'll grab this lightest kind of gray that we've got going. And add that along that top bridge. And finally, we'll just bring some of these colors back to this side as well. And then obviously we've got this really dark one as well, which we can use over here too. Likewise over here, it's going to be even more useful because we've actually got more dark colours on this side. Okie dokie, almost done with horns now. So zooming out, uh, quite pleased with how that's looking. Yeah, that's looking fine. Um, and so the next thing to do will be to add the jewelry that she's wearing on her horns. So we'll do that quickly. Starting with a base layer. trim that top bit down there we go and then we can start rendering it and making it look pretty so i'm going to jump straight up to overlines as i usually do um let's zoom out a little bit then we're going to grab that nice bright kind of coppery color obviously our light is coming slightly from the left so um that edge there will catch some light And 
and then this is most of the light's going to be contrasted, concentrated on the left hand side for this bit. Okay, and then we grab the next lighter colour, which in this case is going to be the kind of goldy tone. same as before, concentrating on that left hand side. Okay, and then we can go even brighter, we can grab this nice bright gold. with the bright light sometimes just creating large patches of the, the brighter gold. Oh thank you so much Mascano, that's very very kind. Um, okay, so I think the very last thing we are going to do today is uh, I think we should I think we should block the hair in. Now we've got this fiery, fiery red hair that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to make a new layer for that. I'm going to borrow from those eyebrows to get us started, and just start blocking in the base tones for the hair. down a little bit please. And then we've got kind of a combination of dreads and braids that will uh, tumble down the character's back. I'm gonna move my canvas over to the side a bit. Oh, Oh, we are super laggy sometimes. Okay, now it's just a matter of being careful, staying within the lines, and just filling in all the hair. Oops, let's just go up a bit. Thank you so much to Bomb the Fox for the follow. If you have uh, a little bit of afternoon and enjoy the stream. Alright, I'm just going to fill in this bit. You can see she's kind of tied off the bottom of her braid. That's one side. Uh, oh, we've got this little curl to do. Let's do that first. Let's just do the right hand side and the top actually because we've got to do a little kind of crown up here. So I'm tidy up that line a bit.
that. Just a tiny bit left to do here. <laughs> it's true, Ellen, you, you missed out on fun time, so you gotta make up for it now. Now we've got all these kind of wispy bits in, uh, we can take away a few little bits like there just so it's a bit less heavy and we can add bits like we can add extra little kind of curls going out and over. Um, we can size the brush down, get some more like really little spindly curls in. just to kind of get the hair looking a little bit less kind of tidy, you know? And, oh goodness, look at the time. I think this is probably a good place to call it for this evening. So I'm just going to save and uh, drop some links in chat to start with. If you want to kind of keep up with when I'm streaming, when commissions are open and if I'm doing giveaways, uh, nope, not Twitch, what am I talking about? Twitter is the best place to follow. It's kind of like my main social hub um, where I post a lot of stuff on there. Like all my art also goes up on there as well. Um, if you prefer Instagram, I also have an Instagram, um, whoops, just pulling that out there, uh, where it will have the same sort of thing, all the art uploads as well as kind of costume making and miniature stuff. Um, cool, next up, Art Station is where you can find my portfolio, it's kind of uh, simple as that. Um, the music I use in my stream is by a wonderful artist named Kai Engel who does great royalty feud, uh, royalty free ambient music that I uh, recommend you check out. Uh, sorry, LRN, not happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, my YouTube. Um, I'm catching up on VODs, um, which are all on that channel. I'm also going to have a new Destiny 2 video up soon, so if you're into that game, I really recommend you check out. Or if you're not into that game and you like kind of cosmic horror space opera style uh, fiction, check it out. It's quite chill. Um, and last of all, my Patreon. Uh, a great place to support me if you like my work. You can get stuff like commission priority, exclusive artworks, works in progress, and other stuff. So uh, yeah, that's everything for today. I will be back on Friday at about 5 p.m. GMT, that, well not GMT, BST, 5 p.m. UK time, whichever that is for you. And uh, yeah, until then, um, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I'll be back very soon. Take care.